Chris here and welcome to my channel. As you can see by my setup, it's time to play. Phase 10 chooses my TBR. Sorry for the bit of dreary lighting, but apparently today is the one day of the week that I can film and it's also the one day it's going to rain. So I have a bit of a, a damp puller and hopefully you can see everything okay. It looked all right on my um, couple of test films that I did because I was trying to see if the lighting was all right, but this is what I have to work with. This is when I can film, so this is when we're going to do it. So before we dive into the game, I'm doing two readathons in the month of June. The first is the Queer Lit Readathon. This is hosted by Kathy, Rachel, and Rogan. I'll link their channels and announcement videos in the description below, and I'm very excited to be taking part. Keep your eyes peeled for a TBR for that, because I'm going to do a separate TBR like I usually do for readathons. And the other readathon I am doing is Camp Seasonathon, which is hosted by Kaylani, Mel, and Clint. Again, channels and announcement videos will be linked below, and a separate TBR will go out for that. The only like book club or read alongs that I'm doing are the Wheel of Time Along, where I'll be reading The Shadow Rising, which is book four, and I believe I have June and July, which is good because this is a chunker. And then the middle grade March book club and we'll be reading the Parker Inheritance. I don't know much about this but I'm excited to have more middle grade on my radar. The details for both of those will also be linked in the description below. Now as for kind of year-long readathons you guys know I've been doing Buzzwordathon. The theme this month is other and for this I'll be reading My Family and Other Ghosts. I think this is a spooky middle grade. It says Ivy and Ash didn't expect to be visited by the ghost of their grandpa Digby who they've never met. They definitely didn't expect him to ask them to come and run the family hotel, Grave Grange, which happens to be very haunted. Between some unlikely guests, their grandpa Digby going missing, and one ghostly dribbling hound, Ivy and Ash are faced with chaos and mayhem. Can they save the hotel and their new spooky friends before they lose their home for good? So this was a book I had hoped to save for spooky season, but it was the only book I owned that had the word other in it, so I guess I'm reading it in June. So for TBR Knockout, which I've also been doing, I needed to read a book by an LGBTQ plus author, and I'm going to read Camp Quote Bag by Nicole Melby and AJ Sass, because I know that AJ Sass is part of the LGBTQ plus community. And I needed to read a book featuring an LGBTQ plus character, so I'm going to be reading Payback's A Witch by Lana Harper. This is a romance, I believe, and our main character is bisexual, I think. Very excited to check both of these out, and I enjoy that they have very different vibes. So it'll kind of break up any reading patterns I get to, and like this one especially could be a palate cleanser. Then the last kind of read-along I'm doing is my own, which is the kind of Percy Jackson universe books. And in the month of June, I will be tackling the Demigod Diaries, which I have no idea what happens in here, as I've never read this one. Um, but I believe it follows the Hero of Olympus series. Speaking of that series, I'll be reading The Blood of Olympus, which is the fifth and final book in the Heroes of Olympus series. And then I will be starting the Trials of Apollo series by reading The Hidden Oracle. Very excited to dive back into the Trials of Apollo series because Apollo is my favorite character in the whole series. So very excited to continue on with my Rick Riordan reread for the month of June. This brings me to my nonfiction choice of the month, and for this I'm going to go with The Rise and Reign of the Mammals by Steve Brusati. I read The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs a couple months ago. I really enjoyed it, and this is kind of his follow-up that I think takes us from the end of the dinosaurs to current times. So I'm really curious to see what I learn about in this one, because I'm still not over the fact that birds are dinosaurs. And now it brings me to what I think is everybody's favorite part of this video, at least it's mine. Uh, my TBR Jar of Doom. So three series to continue and we'll see what comes out of here. Very nervous about this because, uh, well, it's not been nice to me lately. Let's see. We'll go with this orange one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that orange one. As it falls off my uh, book here. And that blue one. And I did that without dumping a ton of papers on the floor. So the first series is Port Danby by London Lovett. Let's see if I have access to book two. Okay, so the second book in this series is only 
available for purchase. Like I can't get it anywhere for free and I'm trying not to spend any more money on books right now. So that'll come out of my TBR jar for now. And we'll pick something else and we'll go with uh, this red one, I guess. Um, the Secret Zoo by Brian Chick. So the second book in this series is Secrets and Shadows. And in the first book, we follow four kids, Noah, his sister Megan, and their best friends Richie and Ella. And there are some strange things going on at the zoo they live next door to. And Megan ends up going missing, so the other three kind of have to go after her and they discover this secret zoo within the zoo. I have vague recollections of this one, but I feel like I remember enough that reading book two will jog my memory. So The Secret Zoo is the first series I will continue. Series number two is The Whiz Pop Chocolate Shop by Kate Sanders. So I own the second book for this, and that's The Curse of the Chocolate Phoenix. I know in the first book we're following Oz and Lily and I remember not loving the first book but I have decided to give the second book a try mainly because I own it. So we'll see if the second book improves on the first book at all and if not then at least I can get this off of my shelf. And then the third series I'm going to continue in June is... The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn. Just what I wanted, a chunky adult fantasy. So the third book in this series is Wrath, which is the one I'm on. This follows a giant war that is starting to take place in the Banished Lands. I've read so many books since I read book two that don't ask me the characters' names. I will not remember them off the top of my head. Um, the only reason I ever remembered that the Banished Lands were a thing is because when I was requesting it from the library, I saw that and was like, oh, right, okay, that's that one. And I kind of immediately started remembering some of the details, not character names, but some of the details. So I will be reading Wrath in the month of June. And yeah, those are my three series. I told you my TBR jar hasn't exactly been nice to me lately because, well, I've got an adult fantasy, which was not what I wanted to get stuck on my TBR. Especially if it wasn't my Robert Jordan book. A middle grade whose first book is meh. And I wasn't sure I wanted to continue it. And I definitely wouldn't have if I didn't own it. And a middle grade where I'm like fuzzy on the details. So we'll see how that goes in the month of June. So all of the prompts are back in here. And I can put this away for the month. Which means it is time to talk about the board. So it is May 24th when I'm filming this, and the books I have left to complete for my Phase 10 TBR are Mad Ship, and I believe I'm like a third of the way through that, and um, Fester Grimm, which is on my final book support group TBR, and I'm planning to read that this weekend. So I see no reason why I'm not going to finish my TBR. Therefore, I'm going to give myself a reward. I did end up earning that punishment. I did not finish my TBR. Oh well. I've also decided a fun way to figure out where the prompt goes would be to just pull a card out of here. I will shuffle it right back into the deck uh, for the purposes of my game, but I figured that would be easier than spinning a wheel. Um, and if I get a wild, I, I can put it wherever I want. Like it it'll be dealer's choice. If it's a skip, I'll just reshuffle. So the card I'm going to go with is this one. A red eight. Okay, and the reward prompt I'm going to go with is this one. So we'll take this down and we'll put this up. We're going to take that prompt, mix it back in the deck. So that it eventually maybe we'll get on the board. Since I just took it down. Oops. And then here's the red eight. We'll slide that back in the deck and then we'll shuffle the deck a few times just to give it a shot of coming up. Not that I need a red eight. So with all that out of the way, we can dive into the game. Draw number one is a skip. Perfect. We're starting off this round with me not needing to pick a prompt. Perfect. Draw number two is a yellow 10. 
and the prompt for yellow 10 is published in your birth month. So for this, I literally went through the books I hope to get to this month and picked the first one that was published in February. And according to Goodreads, Finna by Nino Cipri was published in the month of February. It says, it's a rambunctious, touching story that blends all the horrors the multiverse has to offer with the everyday awfulness of low-wage work. It explores queer relationships and queer feelings, capitalism and accountability, labor and love, all with a bouncing sense of humor and a commitment to the strange. So uh, based on what I've heard about this, it features queer characters who work in a not an Ikea who end up finding a portal that leads them to other worlds inside of the not an Ikea. Uh, this is the group book for the queer lit readathon. Well, one of them, and that's why I'm reading it. And it has been published in February, according to Goodreads. So I'm going to be reading this for published in my birth month. That took way longer than it should have. Draw number three is a six. And my prompts have fallen over. That's a... Uh... Uh, yellow six is title has the same number of letters or words as your name. So a four word title or a four letter title. So I could have done ruin because there's four letters in ruin, but I don't know that I want to put that on my phase 10 TBR because I might want more time to read that than just June. So I'm going to go with four words and for that, I'm going to read Ways to Make Sunshine by Renee Watson. This is the last of my spring covers. So I'm going to be reading it anyways. And it is a lot shorter and easier to get to. And I'm hoping to not have to put a punishment on the board again. And keep in mind, two of the things this could be, my punishment if I pull a blue four, is completely start over your TBR, meaning I would need to pick completely different books for every single prompt. And I couldn't use this book on that TBR for a different prompt. Or only read books that are standalones. So I don't want to put Ruin on there. Because I may end up needing it for this anyway. So ways to make sunshine. Draw number four is a green six. And the prompt for green six is dad pick. Okay. So, uh, what I do is I will pick four books right now for you and tell you about them. And then I will have my dad pick one of those four books. Two of them are books I want to read right now or want slash don't mind having on my TBR. And two of them are not. So, this also means I can't use them for any other prompts because I won't be getting my dad pick until after I film. So, we'll put that into account. So... I think I will go with The Rise and Reign of Mammals because it's nonfiction. It could be fun. I want to read it anyways, and I could see my dad being drawn to this. We'll also go with The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller because it is a book I'm planning to get to in the month of June, and it's got some mythology in it, so he might be drawn to that. I'll go with Beneath a Scarlet Sky by Mark Sullivan. This is a historical fiction that is set in World War II, and I believe it's in Italy. And as you can see by the size, it is not a book I want to get to right now. But he does like history, so we'll go with that. And then we'll go with the final revival of Opal and Nev, which, yeah, I believe it involves, like, a singer-songwriter, and it's kind of got uh, Daisy Joan and the Six Vibes, and a dual timeline, and music is involved, obviously, and my dad is a drummer, or was a drummer. I don't know if he ever stopped being a drummer, but he actually performed in bands, so uh, this one could also appeal to him. So those are going to be my four choices, and the winner is this one. Hopefully he chose one of the two I'm getting to this month anyways, and not one of the two that I want to read, but I don't want to read in June. Draw number five is a red 12. And the prompt for red 12, which I've been chasing around my room because it keeps falling off the board, is nonfiction. Well, can't use the rise and reign of mammals for that. Good thing I have a few other nonfiction I hope to get to this month. So for this, I'm going to choose Welcome to St. Hell, My Trans Teen Misadventure, which is a graphic novel 
memoir and I don't know much more about it but I am very curious to give it a go. I love reading memoirs and graphic novel form. It's such an interesting medium to tell your story and it feels so different than just reading a like biography or like an actual book book. So very excited to check this out and yeah perfect. Nonfiction. Hopefully the prompt for Road 12 will actually stay on the board this time as opposed to I swear I picked it up like seven or eight times throughout the month. Um, Journal number six is a red nine. I do not need nines. I need ones and elevens. Oh, so close. The prompt for red nine is thriller or mystery. Well, that's easy. I have tons of cozy mysteries on my TBR. So for this, I'm going to read The Scry's The Limit, which is the second book in the Shady Grove mystery series. And our main character is Allie. And in the first book, she realizes that she might have some psychic abilities where if she touches an object, she can learn something about the previous owner. I really enjoyed the first book, so I'm very excited to be diving back into the second. Draw number seven is a yellow three. And the prompt for yellow three is colorful cover. So I think for this one, I'm going to go with the Curse of the Chocolate Venus because it's bright, colorful, tons of purple, oranges, reds. We got green on the shirt, brown on the bow. I, I think this is a pretty bright, vibrant, colorful cover, and I've got to read it anyways. And this will give me an extra boot in the butt to see if the second book is better than the first. Draw number eight is an eight, a green one. Dang. So close. So close. And the prompt for Green 8 is water on the cover or in the title. So for this, I'm going to read Count Your Lucky Stars by Alexander Bellaflor. As you can see, there's a lake behind them, which is water on the cover. This is the third book in a romance series. And they're kind of companion novels. And in this one, we're following Margot, who we met in the first two books, and we're going to probably see her love story. I enjoyed the first two, and I am excited to see how Margot's story plays out. It seems she's going to be coming face to face with Olivia Grant, her childhood friend, her first love, her first, well, everything. So it sounds like it's going to be a kind of second chance at your first love. So very excited to be reading this in the month of June. Draw number nine. It was all going so well. It really was. I thought we were going to get through this. We had a skip. We've had some pretty easy prompts, but no, 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 of course not. Draw number eight. No, yes, nine, nine. Draw number nine, part two, is a four. Not a blue four, thankfully. Um, I scared myself there for a second. The green four is dark cover. So for dark cover, I'm going to read The Once and Future Geek by Mary Mancusi. This is my last five-star prediction, and it is a King Arthur and like the Knights of the Round Table retelling, and Arthur time travels to the 21st century and meets a couple kids who have to figure out how to kind of return him to his time. I am very, very curious about this. I'm really hoping I love this series, and I'm glad that I have an excuse to put it on my TBR. And for what I hope is my final regular draw, draw number 10... It's a yellow eight. Well, I'm just dancing all around these extra prompts. Uh, yellow eight. And the prompt for yellow eight is easy, even page number. So for this, I'm going to read Talons of Power, which is the ninth book in the Wings of Fire series because it is 290 pages, which is an even page number. This follows Clans of Dragons, and there's like a prophecy in the first book about these dragons of destiny that will help save the world and we're on to a completely different crew with a completely different prophecy. I've really enjoyed this kind of arc in the series and I'm curious to see where we go from here. Okay so with that it means I have to do my wild roll and we're hoping for anything but a six and we got oh a one. It was nice to me sort of unless this is another wild and then I have to you know ro roll again or I get, I get a four because then I'm going to have to start over. So the one and only wild draw, which we're hoping is anything but a wild or a blue four is oh, a one. I can put it over here. Okay. Now the question is, 
None of them get me any bonuses. I have yet to pull a blue prompt this game. So I could go with that. Um... I've pulled three greens. I think I'm going to go for the red 10. My, my brain is screaming red 10. So we're going to go with the red 10 and hope that that was the right decision. So the prompt for red 10 is image on the spine. Easy. So for this, I'm going to go with Icebreaker by A.L. Graziati. And as you can see, you can see their faces on the spine, which would be an image. This is a YA that follow, I believe, yes, according to my library, it's a YA that follows 17-year-old Mickey James III, who's a college freshman, a brother to five sisters, and a hockey legend. With a father and a grandfather who have gone down in NHL history, Mickey is almost guaranteed the league's top draft spot. The only person standing in his way is Jason Caulfield, a contender for the number one spot in Mickey's infuriating and infuriatingly attractive teammate. When rivalry turns to something more, Mickey will have to decide what he really wants and what he's willing to risk for it. This is a story about falling in love, finding your team on and off the ice, and choosing your own path. Very, very excited to get to this. Really think it's going to be a fun read and is absolutely perfect for image on the spine. So there you have it. That is my TBR. Uh, no punishment prompts, no reward prompts. Did not finish my phase, but because of this skip, even with the wild, I only have 10 prompts. So hopefully a pretty easy month that will allow me to read a lot of books that I am excited to get to, as opposed to books that I kind of have to fit to prompts, because sometimes that doesn't always coincide with books I want to be reading. So yeah, so that's my TBR. What is a book you're hoping to get to this month? Let me know in the comments section below. All of my social media is listed in the description below. If you'd like to come chat with me, if you've made it this far in the video, leave me hockey emojis in honor of the last book that I chose. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!